Welcome back. Still on the president's speech, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, describes the 2021 New Year address by President Muhammadu Buhari as empty and directionless. The party in a statement confirms that Nigeria has no leader. That's a tough one. The PDP lamented that it is appalling that on New Year Day, all that the President Buhari could offer the nation was a reused script full of lame excuses and empty promises that addresses nothing. Joining us to discuss this is Diron Odeyemi, who is the Deputy National Publicity Secretary of PDP. He joins us from London. Good evening, Mr. Diron Odeyemi. Good evening. How are you? Um, Compliment of the season. Um, and Happy New Year. And same to you. I can see that you are... You're really having fun. But let's get talking now. Um, what exactly do you mean that Nigeria is leaderless? Is this another political jibes or you have some proof to show that? When we say this, we mean every word of it. And I want to say that it's very unfortunate that uh, that is the kind of speech the president could put up. Uh, I want to examine this speech in uh, two or three ways. I want to look at it in the area of content, in the area of, the, of his personality, and in the area of the expectation of Nigerians. Okay. If you look at the content, it is very shallow and empty, directionless, and very, very disappointing because it contains nothing. And when I say nothing, it has nothing in it to say that this is coming from our president. Have you read the and speech? And this is why I want to agree. This is why I want to agree that people who said the president only read a prepared speech and he did not address the nation. That's different between the two. Somebody must have prepared that speech for him to read quite well. But if he is convinced within himself with what he is saying, I want to assure you that delivery will be, will, you know, will be different. And if you now look at the personality of the person delivering the speech, that is the president, don't forget that he once told us that old age will limit his performance, even when he was contesting for this election. And what he has displayed today is that indeed old age has taken over his performance. He's not even performing. Now, Apart from the old age, Nigerians look at him and he's from his comportment. There's lack, that lack of trust, lack of insincerity. is more or less reading what was prepared for him and not what he is convinced okay, do you, do, as do, a president. Do you know, I, I, while you are yet to give me the third point, let me quickly listen to the third point so that I can bring up questions. Yeah, the, third point is, the third point is... And Nigerian's expectations met with this speech, and we say no. The president only talked about employment, and he said we will do something about it. He didn't talk about the fuel price. He didn't talk about electricity, transportation, bringing food into the table of an average Nigerian. So all in all, his speech are very disappointing. Okay. Nigerians. Okay. I'm disappointed. Okay, let, let's look at the first two points you raised. I think the third point yeah. were very specific about what you described as the expectations of Nigerians not being met. The first two, so that you are also not accused of giving us empty and directionless uh, comments. <laughs> what exactly yes. do you mean that the content is empty? I, I can give you a series of issues. They mentioned the C. C is the security, the economy, economy and the anti-corruption fight. Anti -corruption. So yes. don't you think the issue of security was addressed with what they said, that they are going to reorganize the security apparatus? Don't you think on the economy, they mentioned the issue of rail line? They mentioned the issue of diversification? They mentioned the issue of creating jobs for the youth? And just a few minutes ago, the spokesperson of the presidency just told us by before the end of this year, the 774,000 people will be given the three months job. You know, at least what you describe as empty. Let me start with the issue of security, which is the first one. 
if we have a president who is celebrating the uh, uh, what do you call it? The release of 300 captured students. And it's not talking about wiping up banditry, ending Boko Haram. And it's not telling us about even capturing people who took these students hostage. All what he told us was, you know, to celebrate the release of these 300. I think it's a complete failure. If the president is telling us at this stage that he is going to reorganize and re-energize the security apparatus after almost six years in office, after telling us that Boko Haram has been technically defeated, after telling us that almost 635 billion naira as a loan was spent to, to fight Boko Haram, and the city tell telling us that we are going to reorganize, Despite the fact that both the Senate, the Rep, and everyone in Nigeria has been crying for the retirement of these service chiefs, if all the president is telling us about security is that we are celebrating 300, the release of 300 students, it's a complete failure. Let's now go to the economy. What is there in the economy to celebrate? The president, as a matter of fact, is not an expert in the economy, and he didn't shy away from you know, not saying anything much about it other than saying that we will do something about, you know, we will do something about uh, energizing our economy through the provision of food. In what way? It should be specific. That's what Nigerians are ready to, 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 to hear from you. Not that uh, because you are open the border, now the economy will improve. You are not talking, also, uh, talking to us about employment of youth. You are not talking to us about what you are going to do to improve the economy? You are not talking about the increase in the foil, in the foil, in the price of fuel, and you say you have achieved something about the economy. He is not even claiming to have achieved anything. What he's saying is he has not said anything about economy. Then talking of anti-corruption, I would have expected the president to offer an apology to Nigeria that they have failed on their promises through which the Nigerians voted for them, because. On anti-corruption, the president still came to say that on anti-corruption, we have done our best, we will continue to do our best, and we will, we will, we will uh, cooperate with the legislative act to ensure that speedy recovery or a speedy trial of corrupt uh, people are done. Is that an achievement, my brother? Is that what Nigerians expect to, do, to hear from the president? Okay. Who came on the do basis of you know, weapon of corruption in this country. Do you know, let's and take as it. As a of that, corruption has even, is even fighting back. Uh, do you know, let's, uh, let's, you know, we this one way, let's look at it on the merit of what you said. Now, let's go back to the economy. Yeah. And if time permits, we'll still go back to security. On the economy, I think uh, for observers like us, sometimes we like to say, I think the president has done well by not abandoning what PDP started in terms of the real project, because people will say, oh, what has he done by himself? But we were like, why should you start something afresh when the money that was used by the previous government belonged to Nigeria? Don't you think you should give him a thumbs up by completing some of the things that your administration started off? The glory still comes to PDP. Can we forget the glory now? <laughs> This is, this is why I, I, you know, I love when people question what PDP did in 16 years. And if you look at it, you are talking of railway, fine. But if you look at the funds that has gone into the establishment or the creation of this transportation system, that's another matter entirely. And uh, you know, for instance, the, the road that I applied most in the Southwest is Lagos Ibadan Road. This road has been there for how many years now? Since 1970. The government of, uh, the, the government of uh, Buhari promised to finish everything in three years. This is six years, a double, double of their promise. And they are still not, not saying anything about it. And you want me to give them credit in the area of infrastructure or in the, in, in the way they, 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 are, they are spending money on the economy? 
I don't so want you to give them credit. I'm only asking whether you should give them credit. But let's look at the anti-corruption fight. And that is the debatable issue. And I don't know when two of you, that's both PDP and APC, will agree that this should be a collective fight. APC comes with this information that um, so much was stolen, so much, you know, uh, 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 were wasted in terms of uh, corruption. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are not just putting people behind bars, they are also putting their members behind bars. So how do we come with one unified voice to say that corruption is a monster and not uh, a selective thing? This is not about political party. It's about Nigerians. And I think the war should be weighed by an average Nigerian or by all Nigerians who have the opportunity or who are in power. And uh, having said that, this government, I continue to repeat, came on the premises that they are going to wipe up corruption in this country. But you will agree with me that the level of corruption since they came into power has increased. How? It is in this era that we had of people putting money in uh, soak away, in coffins, you know, and in, in, in places that you, you that is very you know, sitting to the, you know, to the air. And to what extent has this administration quoted this? They said they have put some people in, but how many? Within how many years? How many people? For the mere fact that you are able to jail one or two people who are, your, who are from your party is never an indication that you have fought uh, corruption sincerely. Okay. Dira, I don't agree with that. Dira, you, you have just about three minutes, and uh, you've talked about how empty and how directionless the president's speech uh, is. Can we talk about the solution now? I know you can't be in power until at least the, the, the earliest time you can try to come back to power is 2023. Now we have a government yes. in place. What are the probable alternatives? Let's start with the security. On security, I will advise the president to sack all the security chiefs simply because we cannot continue to, to, to do the same thing repeatedly and expect a positive result. As it is now, it is evident that they have failed in all facets of security architecture. Nothing is working in terms of security. And this is affecting our economy because we will come and invest in a, in a, in a, in a country where there is banditry, where there is Boko Haram, where there is kidnapping. Nobody does that. Okay. So my first advice will be to sack all the security issues. And there's nothing bad. They're seeking for foreign assistance in waging this war against Boko Haram. Because if we, are, if we don't shy away from, you know, uh, seeking loan from them, we should not shy away from, call, uh, from calling them to come and assist us in the area of security. That is the area of security. In the area of economy. We are not expecting the president to be an encyclopedia of knowledge to know have the knowledge about the economy. We are not saying that. But you should be able to put round pegs in the round hole. Like Obama Sojo did when he was there, like Jonathan did when they were there. They are not saying they have, you know, they are experts in the economy. But what they did was that, you know, they put the likes of Soludo, uh, everybody, you know, in, in the economy, and things were moving. It wasn't as, as bad as this when PDP was there. So you should try and, you know, put round, round pegs in, in round holes. There are many intelligent Nigerians who can handle our economy and bring it back to shape. So you should do that. And on the issue of uh, anti-corruption, you should come out clean. They should be more sincere with it because the, government, the, the president appears not to be in charge anymore. He doesn't know what operates in the presidency. He doesn't know what operates in the ministries. And as a result, there is level, the level of corruption has increased. So nothing is moving. And that is why the economy has gone down. So we expect the government to be more sincere, so show more sincerity in waging war against corruption. Thank you, Duran Demi, for your time. Thank you for your position. Let, the, let Nigerians decide who is saying the right thing and who is not saying the right thing. And the most important thing is let us put all these thoughts together and make us better in the year 2021. Thank you once again. Thank you very much for the opportunity. And we'll take a short breather. And when we return, 
I'll be giving you my take. Please don't go anywhere. There is my take. As often expected, the opposition is hardly on the same page with the ruling party. So therefore, the reliable assessment should come from you, the viewer. Ask yourself and gauge the current administration scorecard on, the, on this tripod of C. C means the security, the economy, and the anti-corruption fight. Against the backdrop of their promises and the available resources, are we as secured as promised? And is the needful being done by security agents? Or it is time to excuse the security chiefs rather than the bogus reorganization? The economy, yes, the pandemic has dealt a heavy blow on our economy, pushing us into recession. But the yardstick for assessment is, are we on the right track to bounce back? On anti-corruption fight, we look forward to expeditious dispensation of justice and not just prosecution, but the recovered funds should be plucked back into the society and develop our dilapidating infrastructure. And that is my take on the discussion tonight, plus politics returns on Monday for another interesting topic. I am Kayode Ladendi, saying bye for now.